Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome to the Science Track. We have our life together. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Science Track. Yeah. <laughs> so, before we get started, a couple of things. First of all, please keep your mask over your nose and mouth at all times, unless you're drinking something actively or you're taking a bite. Please don't try to eat a full meal in here. Just a, a, try to keep the mask on if you can. We really do appreciate it. Um, Second of all, if you like what you see here, we have more great content coming up later tonight, both in this room and at 7 p.m. in Hilton Grand East. We also have Hard Science. That's our big room for tonight. Um, we are raising money for charity at Dragon Con this year for Open Hands, which helps uh, provide meals for people in need. So feel free to come up here and donate at the end. Um, otherwise, please sit back, relax, and enjoy teeth. <laughs> now, now the, the correct way to cheer for teeth, though, is, is it's not screaming. Teeth need something a bit more delicate. So, so our panelists are going to help show us the proper teeth chant. We want you to join in with us. Okay, ready? What? Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> happening, teeth. Trevor. Just, just let teeth. it happen. Okay. Teeth. 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 Okay, that's enough. Teeth. Is it? I can feel it in my bones now. Thank you. <laughs> but can you feel it in your teeth? Yeah, exactly. Good call, man. I mean, are, are my teeth bones? That's, that's something we can discuss, because I've actually like, have, have wondered. Like, and welcome to the first question of the panel. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go into questions, um, one other thing is if you have questions, we will leave time at the end for them. Uh, so just hold your question for now. At the end, we will do Q&A. Uh, but please don't show us your teeth. Um, anyway, so I will, uh, I'm will. i Liz. Uh, I know nothing about teeth, which is why I am the moderator. Uh, but I will let our lovely panelists introduce themselves, starting with Ray, because they're closest to me. Great. Uh, hi, I'm Ray. I also don't know really much about teeth either, but they put me on the panel. Uh, I'm a science writer, so I'm good at Googling things and then explaining them to you. So I have Googled a lot about teeth in the past two weeks. Uh, and that's why I'm on the panel. Trevor. What? Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Trevor Valley. I'm a paleontologist, so I deal a lot with weird teeth. Um, and, you know, it's fun trying to figure out, hey, what is this Ice Age mammal or dinosaur by what, it's in, what is in its mouth? So, yeah, that's a lot of fun. What's in your mouth? <laughs> teeth. 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 <laughs> Emily. Hello, I am Emily Fing, and I have an unnatural interest in teeth. No, wait. Um, panel Phrasing. Time. Hello, I am Emily Fink. I was trained as a forensic anthropologist, and ironically, the only thing I, w I would absolutely not be allowed to tell anyone in a trial setting about teeth, because they are the special bones that get their own treatment, but I'll talk about that later. I'm and I'm scared. Celix on the internet. And I am B. Huseman. I am a general dentist uh, licensed in Maryland. Dentist! So, thank you all uh, for joining us so I can torment you with strange teeth questions. Um, so, I think the very first question that I have, and some of you have, I know even some of you would like to discuss, is what are teeth? Both, what are the ones in our mouths and across the animal and possibly yeah. plant this kingdom, what, what qualifies as a tooth. This was my big question while Googling things. I, I feel like I'm having an existential crisis. It feels like a, like a is this cake moment where like everything <laughs> seemed to be a tooth, but also a lot of things that were called teeth were not teeth, and I'm just very confused. So I, I'm, I need help with the panel on this one. As we all look to the dentist. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, so. let's start with the teeth we know and love. Yes, yeah, so I can talk about human teeth. Um, so some little basic tooth anatomy. Um, teeth have two main parts. They have the crown, that's the part you see in your mouth, and they have the roots, that's the part that hopefully you never see. If you see, you're probably having a bad day. Um, on top of that, they've got the enamel, that's the white part that you see outside that all of the tooth whitening, toothpaste are telling you that they can make whiter and whiter and whiter. Um, underneath that is the dentin. That is a slightly less mineralized, um, softer material, but it has more regenerative properties. It's able to kind of fix itself sometimes. You've got the cementum that makes up the roots, and then the pulp, which is made of the blood vessels and nerves. That's the part that you also never, ever want to see. When I see it, it's a bad day. 
Um, you've got 32 teeth for most adult humans, um, you know, give or take four, depending on if you had your wisdom teeth out, um, 20 baby teeth, and I think that's, that covers the basics, so. Cool. So, so what about the rest of the teeth? Like, what, what other things, you know, animals have teeth. Is there anything special about yes. animal teeth? Yes, very much so, and I have prepared a number of slides. <laughs> Slide? Yes, please. So, uh... <laughs> There are lots of strange things that are in animals' mouths. Uh, some of them are teeth, many of them are not. Uh, so you had to put the fish. I did have to put the sheep's head. I had to put the sheep's head. Those teeth upset me on a visceral level. Uh, are but they, are he likes they, to smile at you. Are they like our teeth, though? Like, they look like our teeth, but are they like our teeth? I, from what I understand, they're functionally identical. Well, I mean, not like identical. I, don't, I wouldn't put one in my mouth, but... Uh, yeah, but I think it's because they have a sim like a similar mixed diet. They're you know they eat uh, meat and also vegetation, so they need the the chompy bits and the the slicey bits. <laughs> official science terms, right? That's what they're called, Very isn't official. it? Sure. Yeah, great, yeah. awesome. Uh, I googled things, um, and then you've got things like tusks, like this cute little and, and technically fangs, I guess, with the fanged deer, but they're still basically kind of tusks, I guess. They're incisors, yeah. Yeah, which are incisors. So they are teeth. Tusks and fangs, yes. that kind of fang, are teeth. But other kinds of fangs are not teeth. I are, question. Are beaks teeth? Uh, I, did, I, I googled that and they said no. Yeah. No, uh, no. Beaks, beaks are not teeth. And also, so geese have like these like weird serrated things on the edge of their beak and also on their tongue because geese are terrifying. But those uh, aren't teeth. Those are also not teeth. Because some frogs have the same... Uh, the same de sharp dental ridge. If you've ever heard of a Pac-Man frog, osteoderms. yeah, exactly. Yeah, dental osteoderms, and they're like a hard, like razor-like ridge. Technically, not a tooth. Didn't Dunkleopsis also have that? Yep. So there's, there's the teeth get weirder in the ocean. Yeah, the ocean is full of upsetting things. Um, <laughs> so up here uh, uh, on the side, we've got that's a a stingray uh, tooth plates. Um, from what I understand, those do count as teeth, uh, even though they're like, I don't know, they're like little strips. We call them dental batteries. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I can buy dental that. Dental batteries. But dental the, batteries. the lamprey's teeth don't count as teeth. That's what I learned. And but there's also a fish that is, has its entire body covered with teeth. Uh -huh. That's next. That's next. <laughs> Sharks! Oh no. Woo. oh no, I was talking about an entirely different fish. Oh, oh which, which great! Multiple toothfish. So, so there is oh, a God. catfish that lives in one single lake in Africa. I don't know where because it's it's um, just escaped from my mind right now. But it has osteoderms throughout its entire skin instead of more normal scales, and it has just little like bumpy teeth all over its body. Uh, quick, and they are they are taste sensors. Quick mod note: If you have an empty seat next to you, please raise your hand now. Thank you. Continue. Helpful. Uh, yeah. So sharks are covered in teeth, um, in in their mouths and also out of the mouths. Uh, the, like when I when I hang out with shark scientists, which I live a very privileged life and get to say that I hang out with shark scientists, they explain to me that like the most common shark science injury is not getting chomped; it's getting shark burn. Um, shark burn from from touching this the the skin, which is very sandpapery. These are called dermal denticles or skin teeth. Are, are they rough in all directions, or are they smooth no, in one like direction? Are like, they smooth yeah. in all directions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sharks are smooth. Uh. <laughs> so so did, did, did I think we have one more slide? Of yeah, teeth? we have one more slide. This is my favorite. Um, <laughs> I had to turn to Twitter for this one. So I don't know if you know this, but sea cucumbers have a species of fish that like to live in their buttholes. And the sea cucumbers have developed butt teeth to keep these fish out, and it is ineffective. It has not stopped <laughs> these fish. Uh, they still go in there. And I, I, I had the, the, in my immediate question when I knew I was on this panel was, oh, I'm on here to talk about butt teeth. That's the only reason they would put me on this panel. And then I, that's where the existential crisis came from, of like, do butt teeth count as teeth? And I fortunately know just way too many scientists who will answer weird questions when I tweet them. So I tweeted this, and 30 minutes later had my answer. Yes, they are uh, calcium whatever, carbonate. Yeah? Yeah. Calcium carbonate. 
I'm so happy all my stuff is dead. <laughs> so one, of, one of the interesting things about the teeth definition is teeth is partially defined um, evolutionarily instead of functionally. So while Ooh. the plankton in a whale is not teeth teeth, the osteoderms on the outside of a catfish are because they evolutionarily evolved from the same cell type, the osteoderms, as teeth. So they, uh, But they have evolved them to use them as a, a vibration sensing rather than as chewing, but it's still the same cells making the same kind of structure. It's just all over their skin. So that would answer my next question, which is the next slide that I prepared. Uh, there's this plant. Uh, I wrote down its name somewhere. Um, I'll find it later. There's this plant, and it, it is covered in these like fine uh, hair-like structures that are made of calcium carbonate. And they, the, the researchers say like they are functionally, like it, the material that they're made of is the same material as teeth. So do, do, do these plants have teeth? <laughs> Any botanists in the room? We, we could just vote on it. All in favor of plant teeth, raise your hands. I, I think the plant teeth have Science it. Science has decided. There we go. Yeah. Look, it's, it's, we, we just peer reviewed the scientists. <laughs> I, I, w I would say that would be quali uh, you know, qualified as a consensus. Oh, it's a rock nettle. That's what it is. That's a, that's a good name. So, so excluding plant teeth, which become a little bit stranger and maybe You should leave it teeth. on the butt teeth. That's okay, the I'll, I'll leave it on the butt teeth. On. Yeah, thank um, you. I know that uh, in a lot of TV shows I've seen, when they find an old body, or sometimes when they find a really old body, they pull out, you know, teeth from, from, or they pull out the jaw, and they're like, ooh, we identified it by dental records for something recent, or sometimes they pull it out of the ground, and they're like, oh, this person was well-nourished or poorly nourished because we determined from their teeth. Is that, is that a thing you can actually do? Yes, yes, it is in many different ways. In fact, Trevor and I would approach it differently, both looking at dead thing teeth from different eras and different types of preservation. So in forensics, teeth are one of the ways you can identify an individual human being. There are only four ways to legally define, to legally say this human corpse used to be this human living person. So you've got DNA, you've got medical implants, you have skeletal abnormalities, and you have teeth. Now, uh, teeth is an entirely different set of forensics. No forensic anthropologist, forensic chemist is trained in forensic dentistry. You have to have an actual dentist and then go for a PhD on top of it mm -hmm. to learn how to identify teeth and to be able to do that in trial. But the interesting thing about teeth versus fingerprints is that teeth are just as individual as your fingerprints, but you can't destroy the individual pattern on your teeth the way you can with fingerprints. Like I've destroyed one of my fingerprints by sticking a needle through it too many times. Sewing, not, <laughs> not injections. Um, but the teeth, the, the pattern of it rods on your teeth, the pattern of enamel on your teeth is individual. And uh, once you slice that and you look at it under a microscope, that is you. That is you as a person. But what if I don't so have dental insurance and so my teeth well, enamel is going bye-bye? However, you're, sti you're still gonna be able to be identified by the shape of your teeth in your jaw. Okay. So if you have ever had an x-ray, um, wow. if, and you your say my dead body shows up outside the Hilton, please don't make this happen, anyone. <laughs> um, they're gonna say, oh, this person is missing possibly the same person they're going to take an x-ray of my my corpse and they're going to take an x-ray from when i was alive match it up and say well this person has a different like root structure because root structures are very individual too i'll bet you can yeah so root structures tend to be um i mean there's a lot of variation in humans and sometimes much to dentist chagrin because it can make our lives harder but the main way that we identify so i I'm not a forensic dentist, um, but I've had a course on it. And the main way they identify dead people via their dental records is by actually their fillings. Um, they match up the pattern of fillings within the mouth to the pre-existing oh. dental records. So they often have to do this by exclusion. Like sometimes they'll say, okay, this corpse has the wisdom teeth. This patient does not have their wisdom teeth, so it cannot be this person. Um, so it often ends up being a little bit of like a trial and error to figure out, like to narrow it down to who it could be. Um, if you have no fillings at all, it becomes a little bit more difficult because teeth on x-rays don't look 
quite as unique as teeth with fillings. Fillings become very unique markers that are easier to identify. And luckily in most modern world, most people have fillings or mm -hmm. dental work of some sort. Um, mm -hmm. Wow, that's rad. Yeah. False hey. teeth? Oh yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. Um, I do not believe people with all their teeth removed. I don't know that you can do a catacor. You can do an identification. I don't know that you can use it as evidence. If let's let, let's hold teeth. the audience and questions yeah. until the end, please. Um, and yeah. it's at the end, we're going to do the mic so that anyone who's hard of hearing can can hear what you're asking. Yeah. So how do we how do we identify teeth that are not in people? Yeah. Because I've seen like, oh, we dug up this random piece of rock and there's this fragment and therefore it's this type of asaurus or that one. I'm like, how do you do that? That that gets real fun um, because the the further back uh, you you go into the evolutionary uh, path of animals. So like right now, uh, as one of my specialties, I'm an ice age specialist. So I used to manage the lab, uh, lab, I can talk, really, uh, lab at the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles. Mm. So it was still an active dig. So we would be pulling out herbivore teeth, carnivore teeth, but many of them, uh, many of those animals are actually still extant because you have coyotes. So it's very easy to map a coyote dental structure and all that to and existing comparative skeletons. And we we're like, oh, that's a coyote, that's a timber wolf, that's a dire wolf, because they're kind of in the middle. But then we start to get the weird crap. <laughs> um, and thankfully, it's rather obvious to tell a Smilodon or a saber-toothed cat, uh, because it is a felid that has a very specific dental structure, and they also have these nine-inch long steak knives <laughs> coming out of the front of their face. So we thankfully have very diagnostic things we can look at. It's very simple in Ice Age animals to tell whether they're an herbivore or a carnivore, which carnivores they are, etc. But the coolest thing we do is because technically the fossils at the tar pits are still fossils because they're evidence of ancient life, but they're not fossilized. They've not mineralized. They've been preserved by the naturally occurring asphalt. So that means we can drill into the teeth and take isotope analysis and see what exactly their preferred prey was. Cool. Because we can match, for example, the saber-tooth cats that really liked eating the western camels because the camels ate specific materials like uh, in the vegetation that got transferred into their teeth, that gets transferred into their bodies, and the cats kill the camels and then eat them and that those isotopes also transfer. So we actually have a very, very integrated food web of the La Brea area, and it's really cool. Are you, f are you familiar with the Neanderthal research recently with using teeth isotopes? N no, no, be uh, paleontologists don't dig well, people. I, was, I just thought you might have read it because it's oh, really no. super cool. So recently no. there was a new study about Neanderthals using their teeth to tell what they had eaten throughout their developing life. And they found out that female Neanderthals were moving away from their home group. And they realized this by looking at the, so teeth fossils in Neanderthals primarily establish what they ate growing up. Um, a lot of it is just established as then, and that it's locked in time. So they could actually look at and say, all of the female skeletons in this group of Neanderthal skeletons had different isotopes than all of the male and young children. So you would actually be able to tell, oh, there was interbreeding between these groups of Neanderthals because you could say, oh, this person's teeth developed in this region. And whereas the men within this particular group of Neanderthals were staying within their home region rather than moving out. Whoa, that's rad. Yeah, it's. I just learned that researching for this panel because I don't do much with Neanderthals. Yeah, because yeah, that that one I didn't know, but Easily. just out of like curiosity, I did read one paper completely debunking the paleo diet crap <laughs> uh, because <laughs> Neanderthals oh, ate grain. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the, it's, it's, don't don't that. But when we go even further back in time with dinosaurs, that's when stuff gets weird. So like the, the, the picture of the, uh, the, the, uh, the stingray, the, the bat ray, those weird, that dental battery I was talking about, a lot of dinosaur herbivores have that same thing. So you've got triceratops, um, hadrosaurs are a great example. And when you're saying the regenerative properties of the, um, dentin. the dentin, mm -hmm. 
the um, a lot of those teeth are just dentin cores mm -hmm. with a soft enamel exterior. They constantly grew. Right. So you have hadrosaurs, kind of like like the equivalent of like a land shark. Their teeth would just keep going. They'd have dental buds. They would keep, re you know, reproducing more teeth, and again and again and again. So did tyrannosaurs. Wait, when you say reproducing teeth, should I be thinking like a shark where they lose one and they grow another one, yep. or like a rodent where it just keeps going? Both. <laughs> wait, 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 what? So yeah, there's the word for that. Yeah, de depending on the animal. Uh, T. rexes, theropods, uh, things like Deinonychus, all of that, they had, uh, they, they had constantly regenerating teeth like sharks. They had a tooth bud behind the big steak knife in their mouth. So if you look like if you go to a natural history museum and look at some of the T. Rex skeleton uh, skulls there, you'll see they're all jagged, small ones, big ones, all that. That's because when you're a large animal with 15,000 pounds of jaw pressure and you're biting through things, you tend to leave teeth behind. So yeah, that's it, the predator prey relationship during the Cenozo the Mesozoic period and like the Cretaceous and all that was an awesome like arms race. So what I understand <laughs> with sharks is that their their jaw is also more like cartilaginous, which makes it easier for the teeth to fall out than you know it would be kind of painful if we tried to do that. Oh yeah, that's the, the same is it with, similar? Same with uh, Megalodon. Um, so like you know. Cool little ones that's yeah, ha being handed out. The, 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 I'm de I, I also have a big one tattooed on my arm because um, they're cool. It's the, it's the big extinct shark. Yeah, big it's extinct. Uh, size of a school bus, Please eight whales. Do not listen to really awful documentaries saying it might be not extinct. It's extinct. It's extinct. No, it's, it's extinct. Really <laughs> so <laughs> like modern sharks, they had kind of like the conveyor belt system because the, car the cartilage in the jaw could hold a series of teeth in a row. One would break off, the next one would fold forward, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. With, with sharks, it's like, in as soon as two days, the tooth is replaced. I know. Like, it's insane. I know. What's, what's the mineral requirement in their diet for that? Where are they getting all the calcium? Other animals. Yeah. Fair enough. Like, are they, do, they, do they digest? I guess if they're eating the whole fish, they're getting its, its calcium, yeah, they don't right? really, like, chew. They just kind of yeah. eat all of it. In it goes. <laughs> I'm glad so. I'm not a shark dentist. I would not have a job anymore. Well, yeah, because there's no need for one. <laughs> Just like, okay, so you lost this tooth. In two days, you'll, oh, a cool sign here. I'm going to quit now. So, so do we know, so in the other case of like rodents where it just keeps growing and growing and growing, how does that work? Or do we know, do, does anyone here know how that works? No clue. We, we do yeah, have I, I have no a idea on that. scientist in the audience. <laughs> I mean, the I, it, would, it would have to be, I would think... You would have to have a you know a very heavy you know pulp fed tooth, mm -hmm. and the dentin will have to continue growing. You, more cementum would have to be produced as it's doing for a good bed, and then the enamel would just wear down. I would assume. Yeah, I have to wonder if like they don't have much differentiation between the dentin and cementum because you're just going to be continually pushing it out. So you're not going to have dentin being preserved if you have cementum that's growing from the base and then. Growing Cause outwards, because pachyderms and like uh, m mammoths and modern uh, modern elephants and all that, they have a series of enamel plates with dentin, but then the cementum itself is what holds that whole dental battery together, mm -hmm. and the cementum grows as the rear plate begins to form. Hmm. So it acts as a conveyor belt, but the thing is that dental battery is one battery. It'll be like the M1 molar, the M2 molar. Mm -hmm. Once that's gone, that's completely gone. They can't just keep yeah. doing it. But like rodents and stuff, I have no idea. Fun facts, aardvark teeth also continuously grow. So do horse teeth. Do, do oh, saber tooth tiger that. teeth keep going? Because they're so big. Do they keep going? Just what, what? Saber tooth tiger. Yeah. Oh, no, saber tooth cat. Sorry, saber tooth cat. Do oh. they, do they oh. keep growing or is it yeah. just one Yeah, just done? like quick pet peeve. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is saber tooth oh, no. cat. Not tiger. They're not related to tigers. Tiger, tigers didn't exist at that point. Sabertooth cat. It's their persona. Like Sabertooth kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, they they do not have. Uh, they're uh, being being uh, hyper carnivore mammals. They do not have continuously growing teeth. But I completely forgot to say this before. It's really rad. There is one. So you know uh, you've seen saber tooth cats. They've got the two very long canines. There's at one point in their life that they have four of them. Why? So, this is where things get scary. Mama Sabercat has a kitten, you know, has a litter of kittens. 
those kittens are actually born with long canines. Oh, no, no. It gets worse. That is a deciduous or like or a child, a kid's canine effectively. So it will fall out at a point, but the way it falls out is like in human teeth, the adult tooth is growing in behind it. The saber kittens, they're in so the adult tooth is growing on the interior. The deciduous canine has a groove in it that the adult tooth begins to slide through at a very specific point. They have four canines, two in each upper quadrant. So they're, yeah, it's like an evil looking top of a, uh, uh, of a staple remover, <laughs> but with four points in it. And I found one in a project and you know, I'm like, oh cool, saber kitten, do, 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 do. Oh crap. <laughs> and yeah, it's wild. Cause just think about that. Number one, they're born with those. Mm-hmm. Number two, no, think like there is a brief moment where they're learning to hunt where they have four of them. It's like, it's like vampire on vampire. It's just weird, but they're fun. Man, I wish we could have webcams with saber kittens now. That's what I need in my life. C- clearly, we need to bring them back. Yeah. You know, Come nothing, on, nothing bad Park. can happen that, from no, that. No, that, no, that's, that's a different panel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so all these other animals that aren't mammals get to do... Oh. Can you take a question on that topic just then, or do you want to save it for after? I'm, I'm saving everything for the end. Okay. I'm just going to um. keep this. That so, long Furby has teeth on it. Yeah, that, yes. that, that Furby is that it, Furby it, is covered in teeth. It is it has teeth for it has teeth eyes. I love um, it. So anyway, sorry. Yeah. We discussed a bunch of animals that get much cooler teeth than we do mm-hmm. in various ways, especially in terms of how durable they are. Why do our teeth uh, require so much uh, TLC? The, the basic idea is that our diet nowadays is very high in sugars and starches that really like to stick to our teeth. Also, bacteria have evolved to be really good at living in our mouths and feeding off of those starches and sugars that stick to our teeth. And if you don't clean them off, then they start to produce acids that break down your teeth and start to cause tooth decay. Um, that creates an environment in which the bacteria have an even, be- even better chance of grabbing on and living in. Um, from a from a um, anthropological standpoint, um, humans live much longer now, and humans do not grind down their teeth nearly as much. In a lot of the histo- prehistoric anthro record, you see particularly once grain comes into the diet, you're doing a lot of grinding in a way that introduces grit. So you're rubbing down your teeth very, very fast. Um, so you you just would not have as much tooth either if you had lived 10,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago. Um, Though grinding down teeth also introduces its own problem because like we talked about, the enamel is that outer, it's like, it's like the candy coating on an M&M. It's nice and hard. The inside, the dentin, is soft. And the bacteria love that. They will just like go through it like a highway. And so once the bacteria get through that enamel into that inner layer, and if that layer has already been ground down by that uh, motion, that, that grain, then they have an even easier time of getting to that pulp, that nerve. And that's when you get the pain that you need a root canal for. Yeah, one of the main causes of death in ancient Egypt was uh, septic shock because of tooth decay, because they were grinding down their teeth and then they were getting systemic infections. Is anybody else nervously running their tongue along their top yep. of their teeth? <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yep. Okay, cool. I am cool. so glad I'm wearing a mask to talk about teeth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know, yeah. right? Yep. I'm just still thinking about the M&M things. I'm thinking now of crunchy and M&M. It's bad in my head. No, no I'm go. thinking the whole no. M&M, like, not, you know, melts in your mouth, not in your hand, but no, it's like the M&M teeth. of teeth. What? Mm-hmm. I just, just no. No, because someone's going to then print the teeth on M&M and bring it next year, and then we're going to have to deal with that. Um, Look, I, I used to play hockey. I'm missing teeth. <laughs> so, I'm just a millennial who has never had dental insurance, so my teeth are <laughs> R.I.P. 
<laughs> I offered. I have, I have a cavity right now, and I did offer to be a live demonstration. Um, that would have been rad! I am no, unfortunately no. not licensed in the state of Georgia. So. What if there were waivers involved? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Hilden says you may not bring in any extra outside teeth. <laughs> I mean, I got a tattoo. They're gonna search your mouth. Come on. So, 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 clearly, y'all like teeth. Y'all came and filled out this panel. We have, you know, someone came by with teeth tattoos and other teeth, and and people seem really fascinated with teeth. It shows up in pop culture. It shows up in. In art, it shows up in lots of things. Wh- why? Why are we so obsessed with these weird little mouth bones? It shows up in my nightmares. How many of you have that nightmare where all your teeth fall out? Yeah. Apparently, that's like an everyone has that nightmare what? thing. Yeah. So since I started dental school, I had that nightmare. And then I also had the nightmare where I was doing my own implants afterwards. Whoa. It was... <laughs> but it's not did, my did nightmare ideas. Sh- what? what? <laughs> did you ever show up to the final without your teeth? <laughs> no, that one, that one never happened. <laughs> I'm about to go on stage and my teeth never learned their lines. <laughs> like, I've got weird FOMO right now because I've never had that dream, nightmare, what dream. You never have that one. never have the teeth falling out. My right? shit's it's weirder, for man. You tonight. Oh, there's also so weirder. How many things. people have is never had that dream? Apparently, it's the Western. Is it really Western specific? Oh, that's interesting. Fascinating. Now, I, I wonder what that is because we're talking about teeth and their significance and all that. All of the tooth whitening. Uh, things and all that, mm-hmm. like teeth for, are some weird version of a like a social. It's a status. They, they yeah. are yeah. very much a status symbol. Yeah. But it's mm-hmm. fascinating because in the animal world, baring your teeth is a really bad thing. Mm-hmm. But it's also kind of a status thing for them too. True. Yeah. You know, like look how threatening I am. That's one of the things I love about teeth. Like we think about teeth and we're like, oh, they're for eating, but they're also like defensive weapons and offensive weapons, and they're for mating and they're for lots wait, of things. Wait, 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 wait! They're th- no, no, they should not oh, be no, no. for mating. Here we go with sharks again. Oh God! No, no, this is not a 10 p.m. panel. Okay, no, valid, valid. Let's let's go back to the to the teeth obsession from a cultural standpoint. What else can you all tell us here? So one of the interesting things is, I'm going to tell on myself, how many people have used a teeth whitening thing of some sort in the past? It's very, it's something yeah. like 80% of people. It's super high. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is a thing that's fairly new in history um, because historically, a lot of teeth whitening methods were not great for your teeth. So, Spoiler alert. They still aren't real great yeah. for teeth. Yeah, but they used to be real bad. Like, hi, let's put bleach on our teeth. Mm, maybe don't. Maybe don't. Yeah, some of those um, products have hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. And so, um, but in quite a few other non-Western cultures, you would actually blacken your teeth. Um, when you became an adult, you would have your teeth blackened, but that was actually a protective thing as well. It basically acted in the same way that some of the um, the the sensitive tooth toothpaste does, and I will bet B can probably explain that a little more in yeah, depth. Yeah, so it would block the pores. Mm-hmm. So silver diamine fluoride is kind of an emerging thing in terms of cavity treatment. Um, it is and so silver has a lot of antibacterial properties in like microparticle things etc and fluoride of course is fantastic for your teeth if anyone tells you otherwise i will fight them Um, but silver diamine fluoride is a particular uh, formulation of it that is really amazing at stopping cavities the thing about it though is it stains teeth black like black 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 and so mostly we use it in primary teeth in children where we aren't able to actually drill out the cavities because the child is just not able to tolerate the procedure and we don't want to put them through general anesthesia and all of that unnecessary risk um, for that. But yes, it stains the teeth black and so it does a fantastic job of stopping cavities and stopping sensitivity, but the aesthetics are very much not accepted in Western culture. So when you say silver, you mean like the metal? Yes, like silver the metal. So you could technically bite a werewolf. <laughs> wait, wait. Does, does colloidal silver affect werewolves? I, I don't know. Do we have a werewolf scientist? A whole other <laughs> panel. I, think, I think we have another panel for that. I think we have a, monst- a couple of monster yeah, panels for that. I'm a, I have questions. 
Wait, so, so, like, it's, like it's it's silver oxide that's forming in a black layer on because that mm-hmm. silver tarnishes with right. silver oxide and creates a wow that's rad and so a lot of the mercury fillings they actually are largely silver and they tarnish and that actually provides an anti-cavity uh layer to them so like the silver fillings are really great at preventing further cavities the only problem with the silver fillings is that when they tend to fail they tend to fail catastrophically oh, no. like they break teeth in a way that is sometimes hard to fix silver fillings are great though if you have them in your mouth do not have them replaced unless the this is not medical advice. I'm <laughs> if someone tells you you need to get your f- silver fillings replaced just because they're silver fillings, that is not true. Okay. We don't do silver fillings a lot anymore because, for one thing, the, the equipment for it is cumbersome. It's a little bit tough to deal with. And silver fillings are banned in Europe, not because they're bad for your health, but because when bodies are buried, the, orga- the microbes in the soil actually reintroduce the mercury into the uh the food chain and that's why they're banned not because they're bad for you but because they are environmentally questionable huh. couldn't couldn't we just remove then the, the fillings before burial that seems yeah. easier than banning the whole thing that seems a <laughs> yeah <laughs> so 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 like how else like that that's our current focus on teeth like how else have have teeth featured you know, both both human teeth, but also I feel like animal teeth have gotten used in, you know, images and jewelry, etc. Like how how ba- how far back does this tooth obsession go? As far as um, people have been able to carve things, people have been carving teeth, um, both human and non-human teeth. Uh, non-human teeth for carving are a little easier because you know they're not that big. Um, but yeah, you start to see as soon as you get fine chisels you start to see people taking teeth and making little decorative ornaments and hollowing them out and making designs. Um, You also see teeth from animals in particular before you had ready access to smelting, ready access to liquid metals Mm -hmm. and to being able to form metal tools. You would use uh, teeth from different animals in different ways. And some, there is a group of Pacific Islanders who actually used swordfish rostrums as as mostly ceremonial weapons but also used weapons um lightly used they tended to be a little more fragile than your obsidian equivalent but they were also easier to get than an obsidian equivalent easier to make because they were already hunting the fish for food and for for other materials um so yeah you can actually if you look up the field museum um i meant to find a picture but i couldn't find one that was rights allowed um, if you look up the Field Museum's uh, cultural collections, they have some great swordfish rostrum swords that are just real cool because it's like a sword made out of a chainsaw. Like, that's what it looks like. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. I, and I, I, we don't really see it I mean, in like paleontology, of course, because T-Rexes are not yeah. walking around with a necklace of triceratops dental batteries. <laughs> I just have a personal anecdote because I'm one of the people that don't have wisdom teeth anymore. I will neither confirm nor deny that I have a pirate costume that has one braid with four molars on it <laughs> that may or may not belong to me. And you didn't wear it to the tooth yeah. panel? No, because like, I forgot to pack it. I'm in, oh. I'm in like Oklahoma City on the drive, and yeah. suddenly I go, wait, I didn't bring my bandana with the teeth on it. Because yeah. we have to do a part two next year just for you. Well, no, I'll just take a picture of it when I get home and put it on no, Twitter. No, we got a teeth. So two teeth love you all. have been used in many different ways, both in Western and non-Western cultures. Um, did, did, if you wanted to guess who had a very, very large collection of human teeth in their storage, pick, does anyone have a guess of a museum? So I'm hearing a lot of British Museum. Smithsonian. What one was that? Oh, Mudder. Mudder is a fantastic, terrifying Ooh. anatomical museum. Mm-hmm. Please go. It is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but none of you got the answer, and that would be the Vatican. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, what? what? Yeah. Um, relics. Uh, saints' teeth were... Oh, saints' right. teeth were used as relics, so you see them incorporated into these 
gorgeous, like gold and diamond and sapphire encrusted jars that were prayed to. Uh, drinking straws made out of diamond with like a saint's tooth. This reliquary contains the tooth of Saint Antonius. Okay. But wow, you, that would be wild. But you also have a lot of fake saint's teeth. So um, the plot thickens. The Vatican has been very, very careful about which teeth they analyze because they have pretty good ideas of what is actually a saint and what is a fake saint relic. Um, there are people out there who make their living making fake saint teeth. And yeah. I want so, so to be them. Is, is, it, is it fake as in like it's it's not a tooth? Or is it fake like they dug up some random fake, guy? Fake like it was tooth? a random human. And but this is true of a lot of relics and reliquaries. Do, do they have enough dental records to prove that like this tooth did not belong to that person? Not in the 1500s. Um, yeah, that's no. what I'm wondering. Like, how so, do you know it's fake? Yeah. Well, no, you, you can tell because they were modern teeth at that time. So say... Oh, say okay, they didn't, they didn't oh. play Rob. Okay. So say you're in the Renaissance... You are a scam artist. You are the, uh, what is it, Anna Delvey of the Renaissance. You're going to make some Witch. saint's teeth. You're not going to go match a saint's tooth to a guy who died in the early, like, 50s current era. Like, you're going to pick a Renaissance skeleton. And there's different, there's different um, isotopes in there, which you can tell now. Even then, they could tell that the enamel was different, the wear patterns were different. Um, but now you can definitely look at that and go, that is a Renaissance tooth. That is a tooth wa once the diet has changed. This is a tooth once we're using different care. So what also, you're saying... Also, humans only have so many teeth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yes, once you, yes, once you yes. count yeah. them all. Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden there's like 43 <laughs> teeth of like Saint whomever. Yeah. They're the like, saints of too many teeth, so it's fine. Right. <laughs> but, but so you're telling me that there's the possibility of a job of going somewhere like, say, the catacombs in Paris, finding an old enough section, clandestinely pulling teeth, yes. and then going to the vat and going, aha. Ah. Now, the catacombs are going to be an interesting situation because the catacombs have a very, very well-studied uh, taphonomy. So the way, what, oh. how a body changes after death is taphonomy. And anyone who's done any sort of archaeology will be able to go, that's a catacomb body. That's a body that was, that, that was preserved in a fairly dry, fairly caretaken area. Again, paleontology doesn't dig people. So. However, I can find some, like, there's some graveyards in Prague, some medieval graveyards you could probably pull some saint's teeth from. Cool. Don't do don't this, do please. Allegedly. Don't do this. No, I'm thinking about myself. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I don't think I have the ability to tell yeah, you. Yeah, no, th this is not advice for, for the audience. I'm, I'm just, it's like, None it would be fun to do. We're definitely Trevor. not going to do a heist, a tooth heist. No, I'm We're like, definitely so not. Heist. I'm the chaos heist. lemur. Tooth this is just heist. what I do. So, so in, instead of, instead of stealing teeth, um, we, we, we seem to have a cultural thing of giving our teeth to some sort of mythical creature that takes them from under our pillow. What's, what's up with that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Did you know that in a lot of cultures and, like, uh, before the tooth fairy myth came around, it was a little mouse? It's a cute little mouse? So much better. Why did we get well, a What's the mouse doing with the teeth? That only raises more questions. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, the, the mouse has a, a heist situation going, or a, a scam artist. This oh, contains the reliquary of Miss Brisby of Nim. Well, that, that is partially because um, in many, actually most human cultures, there, is, there are very strong taboos over what you, and a taboo is not always bad. I'm just going to say this. A, a taboo, there are very strong cultural practices of what you can do with things that came from a human body. So like collecting your hair in a hair jar so that it's not all around. Um, historically, a lot of cultures dispose of teeth in very ritualized ways. It's just ours turned into a lies to children. Um, a fairy steals your teeth at night and gives you a coin, and that's kind of super sketchy. And what, So what speaking of, oh, I have a dentist friend who he has a child, and his child was getting ready to start losing his baby teeth. He took a mold of the child's mouth, and then as he lost each baby tooth, he put it into the mold, and then <laughs> and that, then poured the plaster around it once he had filled out the mold, so he has a perfect little replica. Oh. Are all also, dentists if, 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 weird? 
If anyone in a the audience bit. didn't... Okay. A little bit. I don't think we have any kids in the audience, but if anyone didn't know the Tooth Fairy's not real, I'm, I'm sorry. This is how you had to find out. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Excuse me. Steven, the Tooth the Fairy tooth is real. not real. Oh, damn. Um, I believe. <laughs> I believe. My brain so, is going way too many places so with I, that whole mold of kids' teeth thing. <laughs> Let's. So is mine. So instead, I'm going to turn it over to audience questions. I think. That's cool. Um. <laughs> so we are going to Stephen, please come come up this way because we're going to do this in a very specific way because it is really hard for us to keep track of everyone's hands and where they were, and I don't want to make Stephen run too much. We're going to go by section. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Teeth, and teeth, I, teeth. God. <laughs> and I want you all to help me, like, if I forgot who had their hand up the longest, um, just, just help point Stephen where he needs to go. Thank you. So let's start with section one. Okay, I see a hand. I see, I think the, the red wig had their hand up first, or red hair, I can't tell if it's wig or hair at this it's distance, real. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll hold the talking stick. Very sorry, don't stick your Furby on me. Um, so we were talking Freezing. about um, looking at isotopes in uh, like old animals. Yeah. What do you do when you identify one like that there's no match for, or how do you identify certain animals that maybe you don't have isotopes for? Stuff like that. Well, that, that, at least for, uh, uh, prehistoric animals, specifically like Ice Age mammals and things like that. So La Brea is an anomaly. It's what's called a predator trap. So in a normal like uh, Saharan situation or riparian situation, there is a whole lot of herbivores compared to carnivores. The problem with La Brea is a very large herbivore gets caught and it starts yelling and all its friends go, you're dead, dude. And that attracts all the carnivores, and then they start eating. So we have a very high record of carnivores, so we can map their isotopes to specific herbivore prey very, very well. When it goes to outside areas, then things just get weirder, and you actually have to track down the source material then. Yeah, in um, human populations, you're going to be matching. You're not going to be saying, oh, I found a tooth, and I found here's what it looks like when I, I figure out what's in there. You're going, here's a tooth. This is a close enough match to this area. So you're already studying the other areas where this, you already have some idea of where this might have come from. And when you find out something totally weird, you go, yes, I get another grant to study another area. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much Section paperwork two. to do. Okay. I think we, we, I think you had your hand up. First? If you, once you ask a question, if you would like to come up and get a tooth sticker or a lollipop. <laughs> All right. Uh, years ago, my cousin knocked out a tooth and was told to put it in a glass of milk until he could get to the dentist. Mm -hmm. Does that actually work? So, yes. Milk is one of the best things that your standard household is going to have. Another option, actually, is to hold it in your mouth. Just, like, stick it back in your mouth and just hold it in your saliva because your saliva is going to keep it relatively alive. Usually, if they're re-implanting a tooth, there's a good chance it's going to need a root canal. Sometimes, though, it'll retake, and then you don't need an implant. Keep but milk is, like, the next best option. Keep it in your mouth, like, rolling it around your mouth. Like, well, like that's what I do in the nightmares, like, don't so I'm glad you that was right. If you swallow it, <sighs> Can I no, just, like, try to done. push it back in? Like, is that a good yes, place? Yes, putting it back in is also an option, if, especially if it's, like, relatively clean. I'm like really excited to know that well, my, my nightmare protocol is correct. Clean. Next question. Like, if this it's not question, not I think you had, yeah. just like if it got knocked out, but not like all the way out of your mouth, oh, okay. push it back in. If it's in the dirt, it probably needs to be cleaned. Yeah, so like keep it in milk and then just take it to your dentist. So what if a puck hits you in the face and it falls on the ice, but it's in pieces? Oh, if it's hypothetically, in, if it's in pieces, you're probably done. No, oh, yeah, that's why I still have a molar missing. Yeah. Cool, just just asking. Yeah. Next question. Friend. All right, so um, mentioned fluoride. My parents are crazy. They're like, oh my god, fluoride. It's gonna give you mind control. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it. I I know it's not, but I don't that's know how to explain to, to them that it's not. Can I you mean, guys, I guess, tell me like why fluoride is important? Um, I guess maybe how it works. So. If fluoride gave us mind control, I would not have to tell my patients to floss It'd anymore. It'd be great, because I can't control my mind, so I would be fluoriding all the time. <laughs> um, but another thing that's, I mean, as far as like talking to your parents, green tea is actually very high in fluoride. 
naturally occurring. Um, we see lots of incidents of fluorosis, which is too high of fluoride content in, in people who drink a lot of green tea. And green tea is kind of universally accepted as a healthy thing. So that's something you can tell them. Like green tea is high in fluoride, and so fluoride. What, what is fluorosis? Fluorosis, so fluoride acts in your teeth by replacing some of that calcium carbonate with, um, so hydroxyapatite is kind of the main non-inorganic uh, compound in teeth. Um, so fluoride acts by be becoming fluoroapatite. So it kind of replaces some of that with a material that bacteria is not as good at breaking down. Mm -hmm. And so fluoride strengthens, strengthens the teeth by reversing some of that demineralization that the, the bacteria and the acids from them have caused. And I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Fluorosis. Fluorosis. Yeah, so fluorosis happens when you have too much of that fluoride replacing those normal parts. And then you see some white spots. They're really not bad for you. No. It's just anesthetic. Ah. And, and next uh, next oh. question, next section, because we we got a lot of questions, I think. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, I'm really excited about this question, but with the uh, f four tooth saber kittens, is there a estimate about how old the kittens were? And kind of expanding on that, um, can teeth be used to tell like the, um, like, just like how in anthropology, like you can tell like what the person's diet or health was like, can that be used for animals that have been extinct for millions of years? Like, and is there an upper limit to how old something can be? Or basically, can you tell information about individual animals with prehistoric teeth is, I guess, what I want to know. Kind of, kind of yes and no. Uh, the first part, saber kittens go to the four tooth bit right around uh, eight months of age because, because that is a primary hunting tool for Nimravids and Smilodons and things like that. So they have to have a larger stable canine when they begin hunting their own. By, by one year, they'll have either both primary adult teeth or like both primary and like one deciduous canine hanging out. When it comes to isotope testing and everything, you can't do it on, uh, at least you, you can't do it reliably on anything that is actually mineralized or fossilized. That's why we do it primarily for Ice Age material. Now the wild thing is, <laughs> We can, not only are teeth sexually dimorphic in a lot of species, uh, mammoths, mastodons, smilodons, things like that, also some very large dinosaurs, we can match predator prey by the damage we find in say like a triceratops pelvis where another tooth from a tyrannosaur was found and perfectly sockets into the hole. So there are ways we can find it, and that's mainly taphonically how, how everything fell apart and a little bit of like just raw putting things together. But we can't do isotope testing or anything like that uh, on anything older than say like, I would say f upwards 50 to 60, maybe pushing it to 80,000 years old. And only if it's a non-mineralized -mineral specimen. Next question. Um, real quick, before we take the next question, I just want to let everyone know, if you have taken a lollipop, these have erythritol in it, which is an anti-cavity um, anti sugar alcohol. It is poisonous to dogs and cats, so please, if you do have an animal, do not let it eat them. It's my favorite sugar alcohol. I just, I just wanted to ask, you said earlier that teeth whitening was not good for you, so why do so many dentists offer it? <laughs> so, it's not... It's not that it's not good for you, but it's always going to do some small amount of damage to your teeth. So every type of teeth whitening is going to cause some level of sensitivity, sometimes not at a level that is detectable. The amount of whitening tends to correlate to the amount of sensitivity. So something like zoom whitening, where you're going to get more whitening in a very short amount of time, you're going to get more sensitivity because most teeth whitening things, they do desiccate the teeth, which causes sensitivity. And, and we're also looking at a balance between culture. Having white teeth is very, very important in Western culture right now. Um, so we are balancing the, mm -hmm. the damage with, are you going to have better opportunities with better teeth? And there are some emerging products that kind of, they act to counter, counteract the sensitivity you get. So like some sense, like Sensodyne, for sensitivity toothpaste, it will kind of balance out that effect. This section. 
Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, I was curious about uh, kind of the history of uh, fillings and, and cavities. Uh, when did we learn that we needed to start doing that, and what did the technology look like as it was developing? 4,000 years ago. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry about Steven. that. Steven. Cursed Furby. <laughs> so, for shame. 4,000. 4, <laughs> Actually, I should preface this with as long as humans have, as long as hominids have had the ability for fine motor control, they've probably pulled out teeth that hurt. There is evidence through the entire history of human history, particularly once you get social care, that teeth are removed when they hurt. So first of all, there's that. But the Etruscans, um, around, I I want to say it's 4,000 years ago. I need to double check that number if you're going to repeat it to anyone. <laughs> um, they actually started more selectively trying to chisel out cavities. Yeah. Um, and they also had basic orthodontia. So they, they used um, very flexible bronze, bronze like, they kind of look like, trying to think. They kind of look like zip ties that you'd wrap around and form to the teeth to try to move teeth to where they should be so they don't hurt. Do <laughs> not try this do, at home. Do not. It, this was terribly, like, <laughs> this was toxic on many levels. It caused great amounts of teeth damage, but it also probably did let people live with less pain in certain contexts because you're moving the teeth to places where they're not going to be hurting as the new teeth come in. It was um, used on juveniles and young adults, primarily, not older adults. You'd get the drilling. You would generally just get teeth being pulled with older adults. And in terms of like the chiseling of the Ooh. cavities, this this yeah. sounds probably worse yeah, than it actually was this because is not terrible. Yeah. So tooth decay is soft. Like you can scoop it out with a tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny spoon. <laughs> And in fact, when I was in dental school, we did a lot of this. We, you would drill into the tooth to get to the very like soft bits, but then you would use a spoon to do the final excavation mm, until you got down center. to hard, healthy tooth. A lot of dentists in private practice and in, that you'll be seeing on a regular basis don't do this just because it takes so much time. But also like the original, so some of the older fillings that aren't used so much anymore are called gold foil fillings. So they would actually pack layers of gold into the tooth. And they were fantastic at preventing cavities and, and yeah. fixing the teeth. They just, over time, they've developed new materials that are more aesthetic. They look more like natural teeth and also take less time to place, which from a uh, health perspective, it's, you know, you can see more patients when you're not taking an hour to do a single filling. And there are some theories that who's, the, the Mayans actually did a lot of teeth decoration where they would implant gemstones very, very skillfully and very permanently in teeth where you'll get pieces of jade, pieces of gemstone, pieces of metal. There's some thought that that came from people realizing early on when they were packing cavities that, oh, this is pretty and this is preventing decay, we'll just start doing this so that it looks pretty. So you'll get a lot of the ornamental teeth decoration as well, both in living and uh, post, post death uh, burial preparations. So, so we, we are, I'd love to continue this, but we are absolutely out of time. Oh. So thank you all for coming and joining us. Chief. If you Chief. like the science track and what you've seen, you can join us at seven in Hilton Grand East for hard science. Otherwise we'll continue to have content here. Please rate us in the app. That is the way that we get to have bigger rooms and more cool stuff for you. Uh, and please remember too. to donate to the charity. And if you have weird questions that you want to see our scientists answer on Monday at 1 p.m. in calculations you wish we weren't doing, please go fill out an index card over on that side with a pen. Finally, yep, yep, you yanked that. Um, finally, uh, if we want to do a last teeth champ, but I think everyone's leaving. Teeth, teeth, teeth.